Now, I have included this video on purpose because I believe the contents are very powerful and need to be understood by everybody in sales. Now, to do that, I've broken the video into three parts. And in the first part, I talk about the changes I've personally experienced in selling over the last half century. A lot of those, honestly, I wouldn't have expected. But there is some wonderful things that have happened because for the very first time, women have actually gained the rightful place that they deserve in selling. And that hasn't happened before until more recently. And with some of the things that I've seen, I'm also not overly happy with, and I'll share that in this very first sector. In part two, I want to go into how difficult it was to get sales training and even the value of a mentor when I first started selling. But I was fortunate because around 55 years ago, a wonderful man came into my life that was my mentor then, a man called Les Adams, and he changed the way that I sold. But today, I want to stress the importance of the value of having both mentors and personal trainers when it comes to selling because without those you will not grow into your true potential and in the third part i want to talk about positioning and selling today because it's so important especially for those with more senior years and i also in the third segment want to share with you the secret to success in selling is not in the selling itself that's right that secret to success comes into the prospecting and the harnessing of referrals each individual in selling should make because without those two factors you won't be able to sell up a big enough storm to be the success you want to be I first started selling in 1964 and I can personally say that selling has come a long way in that time. In fact, when I started selling, there was very little sales training provided and unless you were lucky enough to be taken under the wing of a great salesman at that time, and to tell you the truth, any woman selling in those days was frowned upon, looked down by the selling community and generally encouraged to get out of sales and most of those women end up in department stores and as grocery cashiers where they'll always welcome and i've just shared that because these days the pendulum has really shifted and in some industries women make up the greater part of most modern sales forces and in so many companies and industries women are the best sellers there too. Yes, they're the ones that break the records and are mainly more innovative than their male counterparts. Sorry guys, but it needed to be said because you now need a wake up call to try and catch up. Another thing to consider is that the buying population has also changed, especially in business, because so many of today's business executives, managers and business owners came up through the ranks as salespeople, then through to sales managers and then further up the management chain. And statistically, they that group would make up the greater proportion of those in senior management in today's business as well. Now, even though the sales industry has moved forward in unprecedented parallels compared to other time frames in selling, in some sectors, progress has been slow and because those sectors were riddled with what the industry calls cowboys, another way of saying unethical, tell you anything to get the sale people, and outright con artists, and I don't have to clarify who they are, you already know who I mean. And in many cases, and in many states and country, 
governments have had to step in and regulate those industries. Here in Australia, governments have been regulating industries like real estate, then real estate loan offices, lending institutions, upsell lending organisations, and more recently, broking houses, which are the lending arms associated with banks and even the major banks themselves. And I, like many other professional salespeople, would also like the regulators to go after those small business owners and tradesmen who are prepared to say whatever the prospect wants to hear to get the sale. And they'll say anything. Now, inevitably, they don't last long, but the damage they cause, the professional salesperson and the salesperson has to usually clean up on, is immense. Then on the other hand, those that need to learn a trade also need to acquire a trade certificate. And that takes years in any specific industry-based licensing program, and that is after completing years as an apprentice. But when it comes to selling something, it appears there are no basics, it appears there's no licensing, and most definitely no safeguards.